back on the uh, Outback. The 2008 Outback. Today we are going to be putting on our timing components. Our water pump, our thermostat, and our timing cover. Do I have to get a new wiring harness next month when I get some more money in? I had to uh, actually re-wire uh, the uh, crankshaft sensor. Yeah, that wasn't good either. Uh, this had some kind of little seal on here. Just a cushion. I'll have to put it back on. I like taking my covers and cleaning the shit out of the inside of them. Where the new timing bolt's going to be. So the gasket goes in behind and then you kind of push it down over there like that. Alright. So those don't get cranked down super tight, but you want some little a little torque on them. But we're gonna go ahead and cut this little piece of uh, back plating on, clean it up a little bit. Really clean it up. Looks like get the before I get the belt in there. They just got a little, uh, they don't have a cotter key, but they got like a little circle key on the back of them. They got a cutout like a cotter key, though. Alright. These bad boys are going to get torqued down to 58 foot pounds. Or I forget what the other way is. It's like uh, 25 pound and then turn it 45 degrees or something like that. Can't get an accurate torque reading. You can try the 25, 25 foot pound, and then go 45 degrees. I think it's 25 foot pound. Like I said, I don't, don't take my word on it. I don't do it that way. So. This is a bolt for it. You see our head gasket pin. I think it can be maneuvered down through. It's just a lot nicer to do. Uh, While you still have it off. get a lot because it doesn't do nothing to hold it. In reality, you took off your tensioner already. If you 
you're not going to reuse it with the shit. And you took off your bottom pulley. Next pulley is this one. Try at that water pump. So we just give a smack on the back of the uh, pipe there, the return pipe, and she popped. There goes your gasket. Like I said, it's just a steel gasket. After handing brake cleaner, don't touch your timing belt. Cause it's soaked into my gloves. We we'll wanna change our gloves in between there. So we don't need the thermostat gasket because the thermostat comes with one. But we do need this gasket. That is nice and decent. Because they thought we were just going to reuse our thermostat. <laughs> I bought new ones. They're 25 bucks on Amazon for genuine. You can get the genuine ones if you look hard enough. So you'll know what way it goes because uh, one piece curves to the back. Again, this is just a dust gasket. Keep dust out. Then we're going to butter gasket up with the water pump. You want the raised side towards the water pump. Put her bolts back in accordingly to how I pulled them out. Not that it matters. the gasket on. So this is steel gasket. You don't have to use any kind of uh, gasket material which makes it nice. You just stick her on there and go. Put 
Oh, well, they don't give you that rather rubber gasket up here. There's one up here too. I could give you that one. Sorry guys, shook you a little bit. Checking my gasket. Make sure it's in there. It's in there. The way these uh, tighten is you want to go in a pattern A, B, C, D, E, F, and you want to go to 8.7 pounds or 12, nan 12 nanometers. Okay, so you go around twice because as you go around and smash the gasket, uh, the, the ones that you started on will come loose. So 8.6 uh, both times. We should have went to 9 because I only had it at 8, but uh, that's plenty. You know what, I'm going to take it up to 9. We got those set to nine pound. Let's get our uh, thermostat. So you can get these for like 25 bucks off of Amazon if you're lucky. And you'll notice the difference between a Subaru and uh, a knockoff if you go get a different one. These are big boys. Make sure your bleeder valves it. The top of the uh, the way you place it in the engine, you know what I mean. And I always put one of those divots there. I assume that's what they're for. All right, you want the bleeder valve up at the top. cleaned it up and because uh, there was a, a bunch of corrosion on here and uh, rubber left over we scraped it with a flat edge and then we cleaned it with brake fluid and now we're going to place it back on here before we do the timing belt I don't know why I'm just doing it like that
putting this at nine pound too. And that's just a guess. Okay. So first thing you want to do is set this, your crank. Uh. You want to set the crank in on it. And it's pretty easy. So you got your timing mark right here on the gear. You're going to line it up with this notch on the block. And then... Uh, uh, uh. You're going to line it up. Not with the arrow, but with this mark on the outside. with the uh, notch in the black part of the back timing belt casing. So, there and there. And then on this side, it don't have a back casing. So you're gonna wanna line it up with the notch on the sprocket with the, uh, where you take the uh, head apart to take uh, the cam out and put the cam seals in, that little uh, second part of the head there, this little sleeve, where the uh, top part is. The head has two parts. You take it apart, to take the cam out and put the cam seals in. That's where you want to line this up with. Right there, like that. Hold it around one more time. Valves seem to be operating correctly. So, so it's that tooth right there. Taking like a whole minute to do it. We can go ahead and install this. After we bled it, we kept it upright. It's aluminum block, so I screw them in by hand. Now that our timing belt tensioner is on, we're going to go ahead and route our timing belt. There's three markings on the timing belt. And you're going to line them up for the first time to set uh, your timing, and then that'll be the last time that they line up. Well, uh, I mean, they might in a couple hundred revolutions or something. That mark lines up, reroute it around that pulley, and then over on this crankshaft, and that mark lines up. Like I said, they'll only line up this time, and then after this, uh, it'll take 100, 300 revolutions to put it line up again. And then after you get it all pulled around there, and you check your timing marks, make sure they're still good, you're going to go ahead and get your cog wheel with your bolt. You're going to take the cog wheel, push it over until you see the bolt hole.
There we go. There. Oh. Get your cold one on. Tommy Mark, Tommy Mark, Tommy Mark still lined up. And then this one's fairly easy. You just put it underneath the back of the belt. It's got a lip. Grab the hold. You lift up. Put the bolt in. And after that, you just release the timing belt tensioner. Sorry, I couldn't let that moth suffer. Figure out why the dumbass even flew in there. All right. Like I said this one goes here. Lift up. Once you get on there, wipe your fingerprints off before you rotate it. Turn torque wrench on, torque goes down to 18 foot pounds. 18 foot pounds. We're looking for 18, 18, 18 foot pounds, 18. Come on, can I hear an 18? 18, 18, no dream. I'm sorry, 28 foot pound. I don't know what I'm thinking. Alright, and then once you're done, pull uh, the pin on your tensioner. We'll give you guys a look at how she's lined up. Okay, so not by these. If you line it up by these, your valves are going to be hitting your pistons. So you want this mark. And this was the side it's tricky. Lined up with the cam cover. This is a cam cover. You take this off, the cam comes out along with the cam seals. So, make sure, and like I said, the first time you get the belt, you can put these marks on there and they'll line up for setting it. And after that, that's it. So, that one's dead on. And then you gotta sometimes clean, I had to clean my block off, I had corrosion on there. You got this mark right here on the block. Put this mark down here on the sprocket. Again on the belt. Now on this side you do have a notch in the timing belt cover itself. And then again, this little mark right here on the camshaft sprocket. Not the arrow. So they're dead on. We're going to give it three spins. Three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and then we're going to make sure it's still all lined up and make sure none of the valves are hitting or anything all right let's give her an old spinner reel Valves are working. Nothing's hitting. Because we lined it up correctly. Let you guys see these valves work over here. You'll have your intake stroke and your exhaust. Intake, intake. Okay, and then after all of these. Bring that mark right to where we need it. We're gonna whip that off so I can show you guys again. After all the spinning, you still now. Like I said, the marks on the belt are for setting it. If they line back up, I don't know on what rotation it is. It's probably like 300 or something. Okay, see that mark? Man, I smashed my finger in between here as it spun around. It flipped my finger. Okay, we got this mark lined up with the cam uh, cover. This mark's lined up with the cam cover. This mark's lined up with the sprocket and the block. And this camshaft sprocket's lined up with the notch and the timing belt cover. Alright, and that's how you do the timing belt and water pump. Now, we can uh, get our bolts for our valve covers, put the uh, valve covers on, set the uh, lash on the valves before, check it, make sure they're all good. If not, adjust valves. And uh, we're going to be dropping this back in the car and doing some tires. I ain't got new bolts for this one. This one was, they're all in bad shape when you take these off, but mine was uncomprehendable. So we got some new ones here that go in just fine.
cool, they give you extra. So I was thinking. And then these ones take uh, these individual ones they gave me. And there's actually one of them that goes down here in the bottom. Yeah. And it only cost, it was kind of expensive, 18 bucks for these, but, you know, I like to be able to take my shit off. They're sending the rest of my shit tomorrow or I'll kill them. Alright, then we're gonna put this bad boy on here like the year. You should always start things by hand, but this is uh, easy enough here. It's all said and done, we got what, one extra? Or is it go from the back door? One extra. That we almost had it all. 